In today's video, we're going to jump into the UI and we're going to go and make that the basically the GUI for the shield. So I want sort of well, basically like a health bar. So let's go ahead without grabbing any sprites. We're just going to use what Unity gives us. Let's start off. Now, this is going to be part of the game UI. This is going to be something that I want to be able to turn off and on, whether the, the game is playing or not. So I'll put it under game UI. And there's going to be two components to it. I'm going to use two different images, which are going to contain sprites. But I'm just going to use the sprite that comes with Unity. So I'll create an empty. And I'm going to call it Shield UI. And I am going to change the width of it a bit. Now let's do 200 uh, by 10. And this is just going to be a container. I guess we could have also went ahead and made a panel for it as well. But creating an empty is just as good, especially if you make it underneath the whole canvas hierarchy, because instead of getting a transform, you still get that rec transform. Now I'm going to go ahead and position this rec transform down in the corner. And I'm going to pick it 10 off the left and let's move it up 10 as well. Now I am in 2D mode. If you're not in 2D mode, this is going to help uh, by jumping into 2D mode so you can actually see it straight on. If you want to go ahead and zoom in, whoops, I zoomed in too soon. You can go ahead, just drag down and zoom in if you want. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and add two images here. We'll just start with the first one first. And I'm just gonna call this background. I'm gonna go ahead and dock it to, well, let's do like I did before. We'll go ahead and throw it right into the corner here. Now, its position that we're picking here is based on its parent, which is the shield UI. So if we come over here and take a look, we notice it's docked down here or anchored. And what is that? Oh, that's my wall in the distance. Okay. I was freaking out. Couldn't figure out what it was at first this year. I think it is. Uh, let me zoom out just to make sure. We'll get out of 3D mode. Yeah, that's the wall in the distance I'm looking at. Okay. I thought I had some sort of sprite up here that I didn't know. All right. So we'll zoom out. Um, I'm going to make the width, what, 200 by 10? And of course, we could go have it auto adjust everything by code. I'm just going to do it by hand for now. So there we go. That's pretty good. I want an outline on it. So we'll go ahead. We'll look for one. Um, I don't know how thick I want it. Let's try three by three. That's pretty good. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that the use grace, uh, the use graphic alpha is selected. So whatever alpha we have up here is going to affect down here. And I'm going to turn the alpha down just a bit. I don't want it to be white. I want it to be a little more gray or based on what we're flying through. I mean, we'll go ahead and turn that off. That way we can keep a full alpha here. So we get that nice strong outline around it, but the inside is going to be a little bit transparent. And you can go ahead, maybe adjust the color if you want uh, the background to be a little bit different. I'm going to bring mine down just a little bit more. Uh, you don't want to bring it all the way because all you're going to see is that the black from the outline. So I'm just going to do a little bit gray, maybe maybe a tad of a color. Actually, this is going to be my shields. When I get hit, I'm in trouble. So let's do red, actually. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate what we just made, the background, except this time I'm going to call it the, well, it's the foreground. It's the actual bar that's going to move along the side. I'm going to turn off. Well, we'll go ahead and turn on the use graphic alpha. I'm going to turn it off for now. I'm going to switch this color to a nice bright green. Nope, I said green. <laughs> I want the alpha to be solid. And I think that's it. Now, the way this works, since I copied it, its anchor is set over here on the left. And as I take damage, I want to shrink this proportionate to the percentage of how much our shields are. So I don't remember what we started our shield at. I think we started about 10. I'm not 100% sure. But anyway, we, we started them off, um, let's say it's 10. It takes a point of damage. It's down to 90%. I want to go ahead and pass the percentage into here. And uh, let's say we took a big hit. It knocks us down to 50%. That means it would go down to 100. And this is the display we get. And of course, as you go ahead and raise the percentage and lower the percentage, you'll get the adjusting as well. And you may actually want to go ahead and leave the, the outline on. Uh, I'd make it thinner though. Maybe one by, not 31, one by one. That isn't a bad visual. I'm just going to go ahead and leave mine off. 
your mileage may vary. So we'll start it off at 200, which is full. And let's go ahead and start writing code for this. So I'm gonna go make a C-sharp script. I'm gonna call it Shields UI or Shield UI singular. I'm gonna click on the Shield UI game object, the parrot one, the empty one. I'm just gonna put it on that. And I guess we'll double click it, open it up. And I wanna make sure I have Shield open as well, which I don't. So I'm gonna open up the Shield script as well. And as long as they're together, uh, we'll close down these other ones. I do not need them right now. There we go. So I have the shield, and right here is where we're regenerating. So here's where I want to go ahead, and I can go ahead and directly bind to it, just like we've done with a lot of other stuff. We go ahead, we make a serialized field for the graphic, and then we just go ahead and pass it back and forth. I'm going to stick to that event system we have. So I'll jump into shield, UI. I want to delete all the code that's in there now. And the first thing I want to do is go ahead and get a reference to this rec transform of the bar part. And I'll also want to store what the starting width is, what the starting max width is. So I'll create a serialized field. I'm going to be looking for a rec transform, which I am just going to call um, bar rec transform. And I need a float to store the, the, the max width. Now I have mine private. I'm just gonna grab it and update. You could go ahead and either make this a serialized field or make it public and just type it in yourself. I'm actually just gonna leave it private. And because it is, that means I can grab it in a week. So max width is gonna be equal to bar rec transform dot. And we wanna go into the size delta. If you try to access the width directly, uh, you won't be able to. You can't modify this. But we can go into the size delta, and we notice here it's a vector two. Basically, we just give it a, a width and a height, and we can assign that. This is how we change the size, hence the name size delta. And actually, that's when we actually want to change it. What we want now is just the actual width. So we'll go into the rect dot width. Getting ahead of myself. All right, so we've gone ahead, we've assigned the max width. We need a public method. Uh, public, if you're going ahead and using the, the direct call, if we're gonna bind it together, it can be private if we're gonna go ahead and use the events. And I've already said I want to use the event, so I'll use that. So up, date, shield display. And I'm gonna take a float, which I'll call percentage. And this is the percentage of our shield that we still have remaining. So this is where we're going to go ahead and use that bar rec transform dot size delta is equal to new vector two. And then for the X position, we want to go max width multiplied by percentage. And I believe we have 10 for the height. Let me just quickly save that off and check how we do. Again, we could go ahead somewhere, make it a constant or even just a public variable somewhere and stick it in there. I'll just use the magic number, put it in. So we are gonna need some events here. So I guess we'll open up the event manager next. Now this is when we're taking damage and I've already set it up that we're gonna be passing a float in. So right off the bat, this delegate isn't gonna work anymore because well, we're not passing a float. We need one that passes a float. So I'm gonna create a new one and I'm gonna to try to keep them together. A lot of times I'll group all my delegates together and then all my um, events. But this time I'll try to keep the, the delegate and then the events that actually use that delegate together. So public delegate, and we're not gonna return anything. And I'm just gonna say take damage delegate. And in here, I am gonna go and take a float and I'll just call it AMT for amount. Now we need an event for that. So public static take damage delegate is gonna be the type. And what do we wanna call this one? I guess on we could call it on take damage, on damage. I'm just gonna say on take damage. Close that off. And I'm actually just gonna copy this one. Copy the other method and just change things. So public static void take damage. And in this case, we're gonna be taking a float. Come on, F-L-O-A-T. And I'm just gonna call it DMG. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep the debug. I'm just gonna say, Take damage, 
I'm going to put a colon there. Space, and then we're also going to append on the DMG as well, which isn't the amount of damage we're taking. It's actually the percentage of our health bar. So we really should change the name of this. Something a little more descriptive. Definitely not damage. Let's rename that to, I like percent. And we'll leave it there. Then of course we have to change the event. So on take damage, if it does not equal null, go ahead and call it. So now we'll save that off. I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the shields. And right down here where we take damage, we're gonna take one, we're gonna go ahead, we'll check to see if we're less than zero, then we're gonna be dead. Uh, we'll have to change this around a bit more. So we're gonna go ahead and subtract the damage we took from our current health. Then before we go ahead and say, hey, if we're less than one die, you're gonna to wanna to fire off the event. And I'm really not liking this function name. It really should be tied more to the display. Maybe taking damage or something. But anyway, I'm gonna obsess about that. Let's just get it done. And I need to pass in some amount here. So I can say current health divided by max. And did we ever set that up? Yep, max health. Now I believe both of those are ints. So we're gonna have to type cast one. Just so it goes into a float. Now the problem is that if we come up here, uh, even though we do have this as an optional parameter, if they do pass in a number bigger than what we have, I wanna make sure that this never goes below zero. So I'll do it right here. If current health is less than zero, then I'm just gonna set the current health to equal zero. Then we'll send it off to the shield display and then check for death. So we'll come back in here. Now we need void on enable. And we're just gonna to add to it, event manager dot on take damage plus equals, update shield display. And of course we need this, the disable. And with that, we just have to take away the subscriber. There we go. Let's go, we'll jump into Unity, see if we have any typos. If so, we'll fix those and we do. And, oh, we forgot to go ahead and pass this variable in down here. Jump back in. All right, it recompiles, everything's fixed. Let's go ahead, we'll try it out. So I'm gonna go ahead, hit play, and this, whoops, something's not assigned. Let's check this out. On the shield UI, ah, I did not assign the bar yet. So the rec transform that I wanna play around with is this one, the bar, the foreground one. We'll clear that off. Let's start it back up. And we'll play one more time. No errors. Let's go smash into something. There we go. Uh, oh, it's the thing shooting me. Well, there you go. I be dead. The shields did go down. Let's not smash into anything. Let's just go ahead and turn off some of these bad guys. Let's go turn those two off. We're still gonna have to play around with game balance, but that's something we can do after we get a little bit more of the functionality done. Let's go ahead, we'll start it up. And of course, as soon as I start getting shot, we'll see it changing. There we go. And sure enough, it is changing. We got shot again. Let's get shot one more time. Let's fly out there a bit. Oh, we got shot. Uh, I'm waiting for the regeneration tick. I've got it um, collapsed, so we can't actually see the regenerations. But we can see that it goes down and it goes up. Well, we've got a bunch of them now, don't we? Okay, well, anyway, there we go. We have our little progress bar here working. This can be used also as a health bar. And I'm sure we'll go ahead and use this type of system quite a bit in a few of our other games. But anyway, as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. I can be a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles. And falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>